two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the road less traveled by and that has made all the difference. These lines by Robert Frost resonate with me on a very, very personal level. It's possible that some of you might be going through a similar situation. If you're a student, uh, it could be doubts about which course to apply after school. If you're at a job, it could be you must be wondering what choices to explore after this. Or it could quite simply be a crisis of faith. Whatever the nature of the situation, it is the nature of life to give us this gift in the guise of a crossroads of choice. To ask ourselves these questions. What do I do next? Which road shall I take? I'm Shikhar Kamath and I'm a psychological illusionist. I'm someone who uses magic and psychology to seemingly read minds. Now, before I begin, I'd like to try a quick experiment with someone random from the audience. Uh, hi there. Uh, you, sir, in, in the white t-shirt right there? Yeah. Hi. Could you please join me on stage? Let's give him a round of applause as he walks up. <laughs> Hi. Hi, your name is? Kanak. Kanak, nice to meet you, Kanak. Thank you so much for doing this. Now, Kanak, before we begin, I'd like to ask you, have we ever met before? No. no. Uh, and this is the first time we're honestly meeting, yes? Yeah. Yes. Now, Kanak, when I was a kid, old enough to go to school, there's this, there's this game I used to play with my friends. So one of my friends would hide a, ca hide a candy behind his back in one of his hands. And it was my job to guess which hand it was in. And the idea was, whoever guesses more number of times correctly, uh, that person wins the candy. It's pretty simple. All of us have played this game at some point in our lives. Now, Kanak, you are about to play this game with me. Except this time, I'm going to be hiding the candy and you're going to have to guess which hand it is. Fair enough? Yeah. Why don't you take one step forward right here? All right, Kanak. Now, before we begin, Kanak, just, uh, I'd like you to take this card and just put it in your pocket and we'll get back to it later. Just put it in your pocket, just put it in your pocket, we'll get back to it later. Um, and uh, Kanak, we are going to play this game a total of five times. Okay. Okay. You're going to have five rounds. And this, Kanak, will be your scorecard. Okay. If all of you can see this. It's numbered one to five. If you get a correct guess, put a circle around the number. If you get it wrong, put a cross around it. Fair enough? Yes. Here you go. That is your scorecard. And uh, finally, here's the pen. Now, Kanak, this card is going to be the candy. You're going to use this as the candy, this piece of folded card. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Now, I know you're not a mind reader, Kanak, but just give it your best shot. Okay? As far as I'm concerned, if you get more than two guesses correct out of five, you're a winner. Okay. All right? Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a demonstration in influence and manipulation. All right. Let's go. Which hand is it in? Yeah. That was wrong. It's, it was in my right hand. But that's okay. This is just a practice session. We'll start it again now. Okay. All right. Which hand is it in? Left. That is correct. Good. Put a circle around one. All right. Now we have four rounds to go. Four more rounds to go by now. Which hand is it in? Left. That is wrong. Put a cross on number two. Which hand? Left. Wrong again. Okay. Put a cross on three. That's okay. You have two tries left, Kanak. Yeah. Which hand? Right. You mean this? Yeah. That is correct. Good job. Put a, put a circle on number four. Now, Kanak, this is your last chance. If you get this one correct, you win the game. Okay. okay. Which hand? Left. That is correct. Excellent job. Put a circle on five. Excellent job, Kanak. 
How many? Three out of three out of five. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. Now, Kanak, what if I told you that before we even started, I knew exactly how many guesses you would get correct and how many guesses you would get wrong? Would you believe me? No, no. <clears throat> that's exactly why. <laughs> I used this card as the candy. Before I began, I had written something on this card. Now, Kanak, how many guesses did you get right? You got three right and two wrong. And before this, I wrote something on this card. Three correct and two incorrect. <laughs> Kanak, you don't look very impressed. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. What if, what if we take this one step further, Kanak? What if I told you that not only did I know how many guesses you'd get right and how many you'd get wrong, what if I told you that I knew exactly which ones you'll get right and which ones you'll get wrong? That would be great. That would be crazy. <laughs> Kanak, do you remember I gave you something to put in your pocket before you began this game? Fish it out. Kanak, hang on a moment. This is a scorecard of my own that I made and signed before I began this game. Kanak, hold up your scorecard for me right here. All right, so that's one. Hold it up right here, show it to the audience. That is your scorecard, and this, Kanak, is my scorecard. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that that is a match. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kanak. That's for you, and that's for you as well. Thank you so much, I'll send you back. I'll have the pen back, Kanak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So how did I do that? I simply influenced his choices. Now sometimes when we find ourselves at a crossroads, we need to make evident choices, decisions that cannot coexist. At any point in time in our lives, there are a variety of things that are constantly either covertly or directly influencing us. It could be anything. It could be uh, your childhood experiences. It could be the internet, advertising, society, family, or it could be all of it at the same time. And while we are subject to these influences, we still come away feeling like all our choices have been as made as freely as possible. And strangely, paradoxically, the opposite is true at the same time. Regardless of what choices we end up making eventually, our choices are up to us. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I do not believe in fate or destiny. I believe that we are the architects of our own destiny. I'd like to try one more quick experiment uh, with someone at random in the audience. Um, hi there. Uh, you there, uh, the first lady in, yes, you. Could you please join me on stage? Let's give a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi, your name is? Saptabarna, that's a very interesting name. Saptabarna, this, now before we begin, have we ever met before? No, we've never met before. Could you just come one step further? This is the first time we are meeting, yes? Could you confirm that to the audience? Yes. Yes. Saptabarna, this, am I saying it right? Saptaparni, this is my phone. And um, my phone is locked with a four digit password. And it's been the same set password for probably the last three months or so. Now, Saptaparni, the reason why I'm telling you all of this is because in a minute, you are going to make some choices. And in the process, you're going to try to guess my password. I like how composed she is. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's try this, Saptabarna. Um, now, in the process, I'm going to ask you to think of some numbers. And when you do, um, just stick to them. Okay. All right. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but just humor me. Okay. Now, here is my phone, Saptabarna. Now, I want you to key in a random four-digit number. Don't worry, I won't look. Key in a random four-digit number just to see if it unlocks. So we know it's not a trick. Key it in. Does it unlock? No. A lot of people use very simple common passwords like 0000, 1111. Subtabarni, I want you to take a moment and 
key in what you think is a simple password. Don't say it out loud, just key it in. And let's see if it unlocks. Does it unlock? No, it doesn't. Now, most people tend to use birth dates as their passwords because it's easy to remember them. So my birthday is 13th of August, in which case my password should be 1308. Go ahead, key in 1308 and see if it unlocks. Does it unlock? No, it doesn't. Saptamani, now I'm going to mentally send you my password. Okay? Um, actually, to be honest, in the course of my talk, I have already tried to influence you with a very specific combination of numbers. And I'm hoping that it will stick. Okay? So let's try this. Saptaparni, I want you to take a moment and uh, think and picture a completely new four-digit number that you think could be my password. Have you got something? Go with the first thing you, that comes to your mind. Got something? Yes. Now, Saptapani, I'm going to give you a gift of choice. You can either choose to, the stick, to stick to the same order of the numbers that you just thought of, or you can change the order of the digits. What do you want to do? Do you want to stick to it or do you want to change? Stick to it. Fair enough. What is the first digit that you thought of, Saptapani? Say it out loud. Yeah, in the mic. Yeah, it's a uh, two. Two? Yeah. Eaten. What is the second digit that you thought of? Five. Eaten. What is the third digit that you thought of? Again, two. Again, two. Yeah. Go ahead, Eaten. And the last digit, Satyamani, don't say it out loud. Okay. I'm going to have faith in you. Just go ahead and Eaten. And that is my password, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Satyamani. You've been splendid. Thank you so much. I'll send you back. Once we really realize the extent to which our choices can be influenced, we may tend to attach a sense of danger to situations where we need to make critical choices. And that is why I find the specific metaphor of being at a crossroads very, very interesting. It also comes along with its own unique mythology. So, for example, I mean, folklore has, uh, uh, in folklore, danger is always attached to Crossroads, a sense of danger is always there. For example, in ancient Greece, the goddess Hikati was known to be the goddess of magic and crossroads. In medieval England, uh, witches would gather at a crossroads, crossroads to do their handiwork. In, uh, in the US, we hear stories about a blues player, Robert Johnson, who was said to have made a deal with the devil at a crossroads in order to become the greatest musician of his time. And finally, in India, maybe to this day still, at crossroads we might find the odd Nemo Mirchi or lemon and chilies tied together to sort of ward off evil spirits. Now, as times progressed and as we got enlightened, we forgot these stories. But the idea of danger at a crossroads remained. So, that is what I'm really, really interested in. The idea of danger at a crossroads. Now, knowing all of this, these are the questions that I feel we should be asking ourselves. What are the things or people that have influenced your decisions in your life the most until this point? Are these people or things, are they positive influences? And at these crossroads, what are you going to do are you going to move forward positively with these influences or are you going to leave them behind? The questions and the answers to these questions are yours to make. Now, uh, I'm 25 years old and here I am speaking uh, in front of you. But not too long ago, I found myself at a crossroads. Uh, I wasn't, wasn't doing very well at studies. I hardly had any friends to speak of. In fact, I used to get bullied almost all the time. <clears throat> and the thing about that is that when someone tells you that you're a loser over and over again for long enough, at some point, you tend to start believing them. And so did I. And what I realized was that what I needed the most was to feel good about myself. 
And so I chose to spend my time doing things that I loved. Uh, learning um, how to play the guitar, practicing magic, stargazing. And soon enough, I found myself performing on the streets, doing magic to random people on the streets. I would go up to random people on the streets, do magic to them, turn around, go to someone else, and do it all over again. And that's how I taught myself to do what, I, what I've been doing. The interesting thing is that at a time when I needed it the most, it was complete strangers on the street who had faith in me. They made their choice. And if it didn't work, it didn't matter. In fact, performing as a street magician was such a huge influence for me that today I feel at home the most in a room full of strangers. Now, what I learned from these experiences is this. You need to be aware of your influences and make informed decisions. You will always find yourself at a crossroads, time and again. Sometimes making a decision is more important than making sure it's the right one, if indeed there is the right one. Leave all your negative influences behind and focus on doing things that make you feel good. And finally, when you find yourself at a crossroads, all you need is to have faith in yourself. Saying so, I'd like to leave you with one last simple thought. Quick question, is there anybody in the audience today who is going through a critical crossroads at this point? Uh, hi there, you there, the girl in white? Right there? Yes, yes. Could you please, could you please join me on stage? Yes, give it up, give it up for ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hi, your name is? Rashmi. Rashmi. Very nice to meet you, Rashmi. Uh, Rashmi, here's the mic for you. <clears throat> Rashmi, have we ever met before? No. No. Um, will we ever meet again? Let's see. <laughs> Nothing's for sure. <laughs> Alright, jokes apart, Rashmi. Um, right here, I have a pouch. I'd like you to hold on to it, Rashmi, and make sure that I don't touch it or do anything. Right? I'd like to face the audience a little bit. Now, Rashmi, a uh, quick question. Have you ever played cards? Do you play cards? Have you played them in your life? Yes? Yeah. You I know have. what they look like? Yeah. Excellent. Now, Rashmi, I'd like you to take a moment and name a playing card, any playing card. Oh, King of Hearts. King of Hearts. Now it's your choice entirely, Rashmi. Do you want to stick to it or do you want to change it to something else? I want to stick to it. You want to stick to it. And that's your final choice. Fair enough. King of Hearts. Now, Rashmi, can you hand me the pouch? Inside this pouch, ladies and gentlemen, is a deck of playing cards. And inside this deck of playing cards, before I came here, I turned around a single card in the deck, face down. Just one card turned around in the deck. I'm going to try and do this as cleanly as possible. You said the king of hearts. Yes. All right. Here goes nothing. Now, if... I'll try and show this to all of you. Every single card is face up and all the cards are different. All of them except just one card right here. Just one card that is face down in the deck. Now, uh, Rashmi, I'd like you to very carefully remove this card out. Don't turn it around, just remove it. Don't turn it around, don't turn it around. Just hold it parallel to the ground, okay? Fair enough. And I'm going to get back to you, Rashmi. Uh, now, Rashmi, I'm going to give you a gift. A gift of being at a crossroads of choice. Now, Rashmi, you can either choose to turn that card around and risk ruining it for yourself and for everybody else who's watching. Or you can choose to believe with all your heart that it is the right playing card. You don't need to look at it because you know, you believe that it is the right one. 
And if you do choose to believe, I'll take that card, I'll put it back inside the deck, and we'll all go back home with a special story to share, a special moment that we share together. So what do you want to do? And to see the card. You want to turn it into the card? <laughs> you want to look at it? Fair enough, it is your choice. Do you want to stick to it? Yeah. All right, hang on just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I now come to you with a show of hands. How many of you would like to turn around the card and look at it? Raise your hands. That's way more than half the audience. <laughs> All right. And how many of you, with a show of hands, would like to have faith? Please raise your hands. Now, please keep your hands raised. All of you who chose to have faith, please raise your hands because I want to see you. I see you. Thank you so much. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You can put your, hand, put your hands down. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since more than half of you chose to turn it around, we will turn it around. But those of you who chose to have faith, I have just one request of you. Since you chose to have faith, when she does turn the card around, just look away. <laughs> I'm serious. All right? Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to give you a count to three. And at the count of three, I'd like you to just turn the card around and show it to everyone. Okay? The card that you named earlier was the King of Diamonds. Am I right? King of Hearts. The King of Hearts. Yes, that's what I meant. King of Hearts. <laughs> All right. Let's try this. <clears throat> three, two, one. One. What's the card? Turn it around. And that is the king of hearts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You did very, very well. Thank you so much. I'm Shikhar Kamath, and I'm a psychological illusionist. When you find yourself at a crossroads, have faith. Thank you so much.